We're doing a battery upgrade today on our solar, and I thought I'd walk you through our setup. There's a lot of good info online about solar setups for off-grid cabins. But I wanted to go through ours because I think it's a little bit different in some ways. Our setup is very small compared to a lot of them out there. We have 100 watts of solar and we have 34 amp hours of batteries. So it all starts with the sun of course, shining down on our panel. In our case that's a 100 watt panel. Now from that you go to the charge controller. In our case it's a 10 amp and it feeds power to the batteries and to the loads, lighting and so forth. Our batteries up till now have been 34 amp hours. These are very small by any standards. But they've gotten us through. Now, once you have your system set up between the charge controller and your loads, it's good to have a fuse. So in my case, I bought a automotive fuse box. And this basically allows you to separate your circuits and put uh, the appropriate fuse for the load you're gonna have. When we first bought our property and uh, we were building the cabin, we just put our solar panel on the ground and kind of leaned it up against the building. And this worked pretty well. But to get the most uh, out of your panel, you want to have it facing the sun at all times. So what I've built is a pole with the solar panel on top. And that way, as the sun moves across the sky, I'm able to rotate this pole and keep it facing towards the sun and get the maximum number of hours of charging. In my case, I can get 10 plus hours in the summertime. And that really adds up to a lot more power without having to buy more solar panels. Rotating the solar panel is just a manual matter of turning this pipe. It's simply mounted in a hole down there. And you can just turn it like this. Ready, set, go. It's really heavy. <laughs> so the battery upgrade I'm doing today is taking us from two 17 amp hour batteries to four 300 amp hour batteries. So clearly 34 amp hours for these guys versus 1200 amp hours is a major upgrade. But really what this does is it allows me to capture the sun over the week while we're away and then on the weekends we can utilize it. Because my small battery bank before was topped up within a couple hours of the sun coming up. Now I can charge all day and over several days and be able to utilize that power when we come up for the weekends or if we stay for a week. We got these six cells for $40. They came out of a forklift and they're really overkill for what we need. But they're a great deal. There's six volt cells and I'm going to wire them into 12 volts for our system. My whole system runs on 12 volts. That means my panels are 12 volts, my batteries are 12 volts, and all of my electrical com uh, components are 12 volts. So my LED lighting, my water pump, these are 12 volt items. And also, I do have a 12 volt uh, USB connector so that we can power phones and such. The advantage to, the advantage to this is that it allows you to uh, not have to convert from 12 volts to 110. So you do save some power because most inverters are only about 80% efficient. So if you can stay native 12 volts, you can uh, have a smaller system of course, when it comes to power tools, uh, you cannot run them all off solar, not with the system I have. So we have this 5 horsepower generator, which runs our table saw, chop saw, etc. And it just stays in its drawer. 
Finally, it's important to ground the system. I grounded both my the pole that my solar setup on is grounded, as well as the charge controller. This is a means that if if the system is struck by lightning, it's going to conduct that power into the ground and not hopefully into your building. My solar panel was $160. The charge controller was $125. I got the batteries for $40. That's pretty unusual for those batteries. You're probably looking at, for the small battery setup I had, about $100. The cable to go from the solar panels to the charge controller was $30. And the fuse box was $25. That all adds up to $380 for a system that can really do all you need for a small off-grid setup. Now really, the only thing we have left that we can't do, which we would like to do, is run our refrigerator. Our solar panels just aren't uh, able to resupply enough power to the batteries fast enough to make up for the power that a refrigerator would use. So at some point we will have to get more panels and probably even a bigger battery bank in order to supply the power requirements for a refrigerator. For us going off the grid meant slowing down and doing a little bit less. The electronics and TVs and so forth can be left behind. So this kind of simple setup really works well for us. It's not for everyone. Some people are going to need more. But I think this shows that you can have a very simple setup for not a lot of money and it really makes life a little bit easier. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Hey. <laughs> Dummy. <laughs>